Hi guys, welcome to the Incredible Hulk podcast. It's uh, season two we're talking about this time, and it's the episode called No Escape, which uh, was written by Ben Masalink and directed by Jeffrey Hayden. It co-starred James Wainwright as Tom Wallace, Mary Claire Costello as Kay Wallace, Skip Homier as Dr. Robert Stanley, Sherman Hemsley as Robert, and Falmus Rasulala as Deputy Chief Simon. Uh, Co-starred, of course, the regulars Bill Bixby as David Banner, Lou Ferrigno as The Incredible Hulk, and Jack Colvin as Jack McGee. Joining me, of course, to talk about this is Graham, Sue, and Alex. Welcome, guys. How are you? Groovy. Uh, How are you doing, Frank? I'm doing well, thank you, mate. Yeah, I hope you are too. Um, Right, uh, here we go. No escape. Uh, uh, Just to give you a little bit of uh, uh, the opening bit so you can all jump in. Um, David uh, is sleeping on the bench in the beach. What a hobo. What a goddamn hobo the open part of this episode, man. Yeah, he's a a bloody uh, uh, loiterer. Yeah. Or it's you call a them. beach in California. There's no such thing as loitering. It's just camping. Was he vagrant? Uh, uh, it's called uh, camping. Camping. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He hasn't got a tent though. But he, yeah, he's uh, he's on. He's sitting on a bench and he's asleep. Mm-hmm. He's that way. He's having a bit of a snooze, you know. And this, 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 you know, this cop. Yeah, it really, you know, quite a, a horrible cop, really. You know, disturbing yes. David's sleep like that. Not very really nice. Uh, shapes him to. Uh, to wakefulness, mm. I said, excuse me, Governor, um, I think you need to come with me. Mm. Uh, uh, he said, well, what have I done, officer? He said, well, you know, uh, uh, you know you're know, you sleeping, uh, you know, whatever. He says, well, I'll move on. He said, well, you'll just go and do it on another beach, won't you? Yeah, yeah, get in there, wise guy. No, no, to be fair, he did mention a bed for the night and a hot meal. He did. So, you know, every cloud, I suppose, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, the guy who got in the paddy wagon with sets off the chain of events of this episode, the adventure. Who and, is uh, that? Ernest Hemingway? We, yeah, well... Yeah, oh, kind of. Uh, kind of. Possibly. A bit of a blur going on in reality with him. Yes, there is a bit of Ernest Hemingway there, as we will, of course, discover as we go along. Mm. Uh, but the man is in question here is Tom Wallace. Yes. He's in the back of what they call the paddy wagon, as I, I've discovered earlier on. But we, what we call it over here, we call it... Uh, Mariah, don't we? Uh, uh, um, we're a police wagon, don't we? Party wagon, cop car, meat cleaver, whatever you like. Yeah, meat, meat, meat wagon, all the rest of it, yeah. So there he is. And uh, uh, so David lock, uh, is locked in the back with him. Uh, and uh, it doesn't look any signs like a hot meal in, at the moment anyway. But uh, uh, no, well, well it, It's confusing at first because um, Tom, under the guise of Ernest, uh, believes he's someone called Ramon. Um, go figure. Yeah. Yeah. Ramon. Yeah, Ramon, whoever Ramon is. It's not one of the Ramones, the, the rock group, is he? I don't know. Uh, no, no, R A M O N, Ramon. Ramon. He, th- he, thinks he's, he thinks he's a Spanish uh, or, or Puerto Rican or Costa Rican. He's, he's, uh, he's one of the cartels, yeah. Uh, yeah, just one of the, the locals who's part of Ernest Hemingway's story. Yeah, f- fight, to, fight the. Res- and all that stuff, you know. That's it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So when, whenever uh, so it, we see that Tom, Tom is uh, uh, having a lot of kind of uh, hallucinatory episodes. Very bad, so, very bad migraines to, to boot as well. Really bad. Yeah, yeah. Really, really painful. It looks like. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that sound yeah. effect. I heard it somewhere. Electric, yeah. electronics. Yeah, sound. the dentist. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I hope it would be just the dentist and not the actual ele- electroshock. Mm. Yeah. Uh, although sometimes I don't know what's worse, to be honest. Yeah. What, you've had a bed? dentist. A dentist. <laughs> you know, oh, right. Yeah, okay. The fate of a dentist scares the shit out of me. I don't know about being electro, you know, okay. electroshock. And but, uh, what, what hmm. about the fact that it sounded like the Hulk out? Yeah, when it, when it starts with the eyes, you know, with that that, that sort of tone that you get, like that yeah. tone, you know, yeah, with the you eyes. Okay. Yeah, that's what we were. Yeah, it had a kind of ringing, yeah, that sort of ringing sound, didn't it, underneath it? Yeah, sort of thing going on. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was all yeah. So he had, he he has a lot of these episodes throughout the throughout this story. Uh, and, yeah, but uh, essentially, what kicks us off is the fact that 
you know, David tries to acquire help in, in, the, in the midst of his headache episode, and uh, Ramon under the guise of, Ramon, David Ramon, what the hell, I knew I'm getting confused. Uh, Tom, under the guise of uh, Ernest, believes that he's a traitor and starts beating the shit him inside the paddy wagon. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he, he um, when he looks out of the cops, he sees them as like um, sort of like guards from the past. He sort of yes, it, uh, you see that a lot, especially later on in the in the boat scene towards. Yeah, the, and where is it meant to be? What is he look, flashing back to? Is it is it meant to be like Puerto Rico or somewhere like that? I can't. I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico. Yeah, I don't okay. Know. I wasn't quite certain. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the I mean, book is, I guess. Books. Was there a Hemingway book or poem based on some Costa Rican war? There must, sure there must have been, I guess. There must have been, yeah. Well, I'm not really up, sufficiently up on his work, so I can't really... No, I don't think I knew about him with the boy's brains are it, but, you know, I will. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, I mean, he also was an alcoholic. He also had depression, oh. and so did his uh, relatives that were actresses back in the 70s. There's so, uh, that... nothing wrong with alcoholics in moderation. And... Uh, 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 <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, we don't know and uh, but it, but Hemingway, we did find, did have electroshock treatment. So there is the connection, you see. Yes. Of the of the blurry reality going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, as you say, uh, 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 Graham, he does set upon uh, um, David and yep. gets him in a, a little headlock, and David we, helps we, out. We yeah. have our first talk out early, and um, a very early one. Yeah, and uh, he smashes open the, uh, the 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 doors of the mm. paddy wagon. Although we, 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 we should comment that what sets David off on this adventure is the fact that he alludes to the fact he wants to kill his wife and, her do- and his doctor. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes, he mentions that. Yeah, that's right. He said, they put me they put me away and all that. Kind they of thing. took I away my writing and all, and all that. Yeah, my writing's been affected. Uh, I want to get my, you know, I want to get it back. Uh, they've taken everything from me. I'm going to get my revenge on them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought, oh, no, alarm bells now, you know. Uh, and he see, also sees the writing on the back of the Tom's shirt saying he's from the state hospital. Yes. He's a so, windball, basically. Now he's worried. Yeah. Now he's worried, you know. Oh, shit. I'm in the back of uh, an escapee here, you know. Yep. Uh, so anyway, yes. Uh, uh, um, so, yeah, the Hulk breaks out uh, yep. and uh, knocks over the two coppers. And so does Tom. He grabs his writing and buggers off into the night. He finds his moment, yeah, and takes and takes David's bag with him. Yes, aye. there you go. So? So, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, anyone would like to come in here? Yeah, sorry. Night, night becomes day, and it's all over the news that uh, Tom had escaped the local hospital, and that's when the missus finds out on the radio. Hold on, we missed a little scene here. We did. With a Hulk in the laundromat. Oh, yes. Well, to, yeah, well, it, 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 it beats up a... Uh, a laundry machine, you know. Um, yeah, he scares the two boys off uh, that are in there, and, uh, has and a, a, goes for a wee nap. Yeah, and yeah, has a little halt down, as they call it. Yeah, mm. halt down moment. Back to back banner, but go. we don't see it. But uh, we 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 hear it, but we don't see it. We get the old mm. sound. Yeah. Um, next day, as you said, Graham, I think uh, uh, um, the reporters are on the scene of the where the where the van was busted open mm. and the escape happened. Along with McGee. Of course, yes. That who's pesky McGee. Yeah. yeah, he's questioning the chief, uh, 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 chief, poli- chief of police there, uh, and uh, he's called Deputy Simon. Mm-hmm. And Tom, and t- he, he explains a few things, and he said, and he asks him, who was the assailant that was with him? Who was the, the guy? And they, he sort of gives a brief description, says David something, I can't remember his surname. Yeah, like, John Bannon, David Bannon, Bannon, whatever the hell it was. Bannon, yeah, yeah. some Bannon or something, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, so um, we, as you say, we see, Tom's, we see Tom's wife, and she's just heard over the radio that Tom escaped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now she's obviously, you know, worried. And Tom's walking along the beach uh, and, see, and has an hallucination of the Hulk running yeah, towards Yeah, he, he keeps seeing the Hulk, yeah. Yeah. But as he snaps back to normal again, we actually don't see a Hulk, but we see a guy in very fetching green attire uh, 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 jogging along. Yeah. And no, it wasn't Borat. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Lovely, lovely, lovely uh, colour green uh, jogging uh, outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the 70s there. Uh, what what um, I found interesting about that scene was the big, uh, excuse my non-PC lingo here, the coward fellow uh, doing the old rollerblading and doing cut and then spins and all the rest of it. I thought that was quite poetic for the time period of the late 70s, early 80s. 
you know, California rollerblading, skateboard, and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, with the with the radio to the to yeah. the rear, doing it, yeah, spinning by, yeah, it's all that, yeah, that was all very seventies type stuff and eighties. Mm. Uh, um, anyway, it turns out Tom it, it reaches this house on the beach uh, uh, where he, yeah. he has been before, and he it, uh, is reunited with an old mate called Robert. Robert, Roberto, whatever you want to call him, yeah, yeah. And, and he's got some gear. That's played by uh, the guy who's. Uh, who is George Jefferson? Uh, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you who it is. It's uh, uh, Sherman Hemsley. Yep. Yeah. By this time, he was still moving on up. Um, yeah. He, he, of course, he he took off the mustache, so you didn't automatically say that he was George Jefferson. Yeah. Well, there you go. But he is, it uh, is George Jefferson. I had a feeling from, from that show. Yeah. Th yeah. There's no Archie Bunker on this beach. Um, no Archie Bunker. Uh, yeah. But, uh, no. Uh, um, no fatty arbuckle. Um, yeah. I don't even know why I said that, but never mind. Yeah, uh, anyway. Moving on, moving on. And, and there's, there's no... Yeah. As well at this point, yeah. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no Florence, there's no Florida. <laughs> oh, it's, even oh, though... I'm in Florida. Yeah, yeah um, even, even though Esther Roll was in another episode, but, right. uh, but anyway. Six degrees of separation aside. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it is the 70s, but never mind that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Robert has been planking his gear. Typewriter's on the apartment. Some money's in the apartment. You know, so, uh, yeah. Tom Dwell set up there. Yeah, he asked, he asked Robert, his faithful mate, uh, to, you know, can, can you uh, uh, go out and get me some clothes because I feel a little bit, you know, conspicuous in these. Mm. So Robert goes off, uh, off to do that. Uh, Tom decides to start on his, his, his novel. novel yeah. Um, but starts having these flashbacks, or these uh, sorry hallucinations again. I should say. Uh, mm. and, and when he looks out the window, he sees a street in what's it, Puerto Rico, or wherever it is. It changes mm -hmm. to that, dissolves yeah. to that, you know. And he goes, "Oh, beautiful, beautiful out there, and all that." You know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, anyway, uh, uh, um, David, I think I think I'm in the right set. Uh, yeah, this is where David tries to contact the wife. He tries ringing her, but there's, you know, everyone's been ringing her, obviously, you know, from the press and everything. So he ends up getting to the house. Mm -hmm. McGee and some of the reporters are outside. So he slips around the back and, uh, you know, explains that he was the man that was with Tom. Mm -hmm. So she lets him in. And he's trying to tell her, you know, you know, I think he's, he's potentially dangerous. Yeah. You know, he, 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 he's after, he, he could hurt you. And he's, LA, he's LA local. This area, yeah, yeah. Open, yeah. He's gone loco in Acapulco. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know. And, uh, yeah, so, that, that you know, that, that's that. Anything you want to say at this point, Sue, about where we are at the moment? All right. Well, um, yeah, he, he uh, David and, and his wife are talking. His and, wife. Really? What's she doing now? Yeah. Or his girlfriend. Uh, anyway. His wife, yeah. <laughs> David and and his wife are, are chatting, and there's a and, and there's just like a, a lot of uh, tension there, and um, that's all I remember is like like super lots of tension in that scene. Well, yeah, because he's trying to convince them. Oh, yeah, yeah you know, um, he's he's a bit awkward here. Would you listen to me? And she's no she's not having it at first. Um, you know, yeah. So, and then that bloody McGee rings on the doorbell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and he has to. He sort of steps, makes a quick like exit stage left. Mm. He does really rapid. Yes, yeah, he comes. You know, it's no sooner like she shut the door in McGee's face, which is quite. You know, people do that quite a lot to him. Uh, you know, <laughs> David's buggered off. My uh, God, was David Banner the Incredible Hulk or Speedy Gonzales? What yeah, the hell? Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Right. He suddenly has like special speed powers as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. I went to this man. You know. mm his powers yeah so so she goes god where did he go that quick and um tom tells robert about the hulk says it's this bloody great green thing uh you know and all that mm. and seven foot tall or something and he talks he does talk about ernest hemingway at this point uh, and uh you know a little bit about that uh, um as, as it seems to be an obsession with him well, this is also the bit in the apartment but tom acquires his, his new buddy his new handgun ah uh, yes Sure. He does, there you go. and he said, and, and, and Robert says to him, you, you, "What are you going to do with that, Tom?" And uh, you know, then he reveals, you know, my my wife and the, 
my mm. doctor have been tete-a-teting. Yes. We say, and I'm going to blow I, them away. I think that that was part of Hemingway's stories too. <clears throat> but they have yes. been talking. I mean, it is true that his wife and, <clears throat> and doctor were talking, but I think it's part of Hemingway's story. Not 100% sure. But yeah, wasn't it, so. yeah, yeah, the, uh, wasn't he explained if they were actually in modern day having an affair? I don't think they were, but it wasn't, no. he, it wasn't, he, it wasn't he clarified either way. Yeah, I think that that was part of Hemingway's. I, sorry for my ignorance. Yeah, I, it seems to me, I think, that it's more to do with the book, the character that he's blurring yeah. reality with. And it seems that yep. that happened probably in the book and he's, he's he can't see the reality in the fiction. Yeah. Uh, 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 so I don't think, I probably they know one another through, you know, him, you know, going to the, yep. the sessions, I guess. But I don't think there's any romantic thing going on. Yeah, well, Robert, that says he visited you every weekend, so. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so David calls the police again and gets through to the deputy that we saw earlier. But and the, the sneaky bugger tr- tracks they've been, his call. They've yeah. been tracking his call, mate. And God, they get there quick, don't they? He's no sooner, you know, hung up. They're there, they're pulling up. He's gone, he said. He's gone. Yeah, he's only just gone behind the bush, mate, about a foot from you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they didn't bother about tracking, you know. Uh, they tracked the call, but they didn't think about tracking him, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with you, fellas. That was mm. pretty rubbish policing. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. Result, you find that the problem, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see, Kate, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, Sue, what do you want to say? Sorry. No, it's, it's okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, next time we see Kay, his wife, Tom's wife, uh, mm. she's she's gone, to, she's at his bench. and uh, uh, bench, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be the same one that David got picked up on. Because, uh, mm. uh, you know, they couldn't probably afford the second bench. Hell and, no. uh, you know, not no. You know, you've got to keep your budget down, mate. And uh, and, and she picks up a book called The Call to Arms, which is of course written by Ernest Hemingway. That was probably the story, yeah. And inside it is a letter from Tom. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and that, so she reads that. She calls out to him, and he's and he, he is actually standing nearby, keeping an eye on her. He's a bit too sure at one yeah. point. That's right, uh, but it's, but luckily, in a way, I suppose he has another hallucination. Yeah. And he sees her as a, an old-style medical nurse. Yep. I yeah. sure, at first, I wasn't sure if it was a nurse or a nun, but then yeah, I looked again. And you went, see, ah, the, you yeah. see the Red Cross on her, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and then he sees the Hulk again, pushing over two palm trees. Yeah, there you go. These are my palms. There go the palms. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and it, it was funny because it was it's not something that he ever saw. It's something that he's actually generating. There you go. So, so I mean, I guess that's how that's how you start to know that these are not flashbacks, that these no. are, you know, oh, hallucinations. hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, delusions. Okay. Yeah, he's having a lot of delusions. That's right. Uh, um, David finds Robert mm-hmm. and pleads with him to God's sake, help your friend. You know. He said, "I'm not. Turn, I'm not going to turn him in." He said, "But you know, he's, he's potentially dangerous. You know, you've got. To, you know." Um, and then they get busted. And then they get arrested. And then they then they Tom get turns up, doesn't he? Tom turns. Yeah, Tom up. turns up and busts them, and then he takes some clay pigeon shooting. Them, That's shooting, right. Whatever it was, he's you know? pretty. He's, he's, he's target practicing, isn't he, or something? Yeah. And well, I find that. I, and what was funny about this was that the, uh, by, the, by the time you get to the end of this scene. The hallucinations are so bad, he thinks the car that they drove there and it's a freaking rhino and an elephant. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. He shoots yeah. down an elephant in his in his mind. He yeah. shoots an elephant down and then he sees the Hulk on top of the vehicle. Mm. Starts seeing the Hulk and uh, he, sh- he fires at that, but unfortunately, yeah. fires a hole in his in his car window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yep. so yeah. That, that'll teach him for doing that. So but, there's a wee altercation between David and Tom. And then it's like, okay, Ramon, no trust in you anymore. Jumps in his car and goes about his business. And then David says, like, you know, Robert, where do you think he's, you've got to tell us where, where has he gone? Yes. Where's he most likely to have gone to? And eventually Robert does, although we don't hear it, but Robert mm. does tell. Tell. Because you see David arrive at this uh, rather nice boat, which is tied up to the, the, the marina. It's, the, it's yeah. the doctor's boat, yeah. The doctor's boat, yeah. So he's obviously, you know, made a good good, good, good few, you know, bucks out of the, the sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he must be charging a good rate. So, um, yeah, he ends up on the boat. 
the doctor and the missus are there, and, oh, good, I've got you in time. Wrong, Sonny Jim. Out pops Tom with a gun. And, t and they try to take it from him and stuff, but he... Oh, no, 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 no. This is the part where he's looking at the boat window and he thinks he's in Guatemala or Guam again, you know, in Costa Rica or wherever the hell it is, so... I'm with you. He does and, uh, say, he does say, he lets, he lets, he lets, uh, uh, um, uh, he lets the doctor and Kay go. Yeah, well, he likes them all go at one point, but then yeah, up but they pops bring, McGee. Up, brings them up. Yeah, that's right, because that's it. Just before, yeah, as he's bringing them up, David's yeah. of course enough to come, you know, to come out. He can't walk away because McGee will see him. But McGee does catch sight of him, or something. Although he doesn't know it's David, but he Half, seems uh, not, about a quarter of the face. Yeah. Enough of him to think that that guy on there is the one that becomes the Hulk. I'm not quite sure he comes to that conclusion, but. Um, uh, because the other, because they were the, the other one, because the cops said to him, who's in there with him? They said it's the, the doctor, the wife, and the oh, guy who was with him the other night. Course. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, although he doesn't quite see him, but he, he, he goes, yeah. yeah. The guy that made, is the Hulk is in there. So, you know, that sort of changes things a wee bit. Um, yeah. But then uh, uh, David goes back down, tries to plead with Tom again. And as he's let them go, he goes, I'm not over yet. I've still got one hostage. And then in comes the gas. And he's saying, yeah, they have a little struggle, don't they? Because he's trying to get him to come out again. He says, please don't let me do this. They struggle. They fall back down the stairs. The gas gets, tear yep. gas, I think it is. Yep. Gets shot through the, uh, the window and uh, David holds out. So, essentially, the cops try and storm the boat. Uh, and then we have a lot of wet cops. Yep. Yeah. They, he gets thrown. They get. They all get thrown in the drink. Yeah, he throws a little boat or a little dinghy, or like a dinghy thing at them, doesn't he? And then yeah. uh, throws out the bridge, and they let they jump off just in time. Mm -hmm. But they end up, in, as you say, in a drink suit. Uh, and then realizing there's no other alternative of escape, he goes for a swim. Yeah, you don't often see the whole cover have a paddle. It's quite. Mm. That's quite good. That yeah. There you go. So off he goes, mate. And so, uh, uh, and McGee, McGee's, right? sitting, McGee's sitting there, standing there, cussing the body cop. He thought he had his man. Darn it, darn it, darn it, Herman Munster. Not very happy. I would have yeah. done, I would have got him if it wasn't for those pesky cops. Uh, yeah. But he also, again, saves the Hulk's life. Just as the guy's going to shoot. Oh, yeah, that's him. right. Uh, yeah. It's not the first time he's done that. So that's always quite intriguing. He doesn't want the Hulk dead by any means. You know? No, he, he <laughs> wants to interview the guy who turns into him. No, he, yeah. Yeah, he, that's right, yeah. yeah. He never yeah. wants to injure the Hulk or David. He just wants, he definitely needs the scoop. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. But, you know, the whole thing got got sort of sideways because of because of George Jefferson and or Sherman <laughs> Emily. Yeah, so essentially, speaking of George Jefferson, we end up back at his apartment after the Hulk down. Uh-huh. And David collects his things. Uh, thanks, Robert, for his help. Obviously, uh, Tom gets the treatment he, he, he requires. We subsequently find out the hallucinations are the result of a, a tumor on the brain. It's not the fact that he's psychotic, you know? So Yeah, that he actually did have a, he had a, he actually was a result of a brain tumor. That was causing all these hallucinations and all the and delusions and stuff, you know. But yep. we don't really find that out till very near the end. It's, uh, I'm glad they found it because that, that that'll kill you. Luckily, he come. He he seems to be recovering quite well. Yeah. Uh, we see him in the hospital. Uh, uh, you know, recovering from the injury. He's still obviously a bit. He would still be a very hazy because it's a very big. To remove a tumor is a very big operation. <laughs> Yeah. And it could go either way, too. You know, some people don't come out of it. You know, it's a risky, risky thing. But luckily, he looked quite, sure. he looked like he was recovering well. And he's surrounded by, you know, the doctor again and uh, and uh, Kay and uh, uh, um, McGee's there, too, trying to ask him to describe the man he was with, uh, uh, you know. And here's an interesting little thing here. The guy who is the, the uh, police sketch artist, that's there with oh, them. Oh, 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 I know who the, I know this. I know this one. This one. That guy, that guy is the guy who who did all of the art for for the Incredible Hulk and a lot of the other Marvel. Isn't that Jack Kirby? Yeah, it's Jack yes. Kirby. 
right. You remember that at the end there, Graham, when 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 uh, when uh, uh, Tom's recovering from the brain uh, surgery, he's describing to McGee uh, uh, about the uh, um, the guy that was with him. Oh yes, yeah. and the guy yeah. that's sketching like the the, the police like profile sketcher is actually Jack Kirby from Marvel Comics. Yeah. And, and and he's not, there was only like two of the guys who ever did the art for Incredible Hulk, and that is Jack Kirby and this guy named Paul Reinman. But honestly, really, only Jack Kirby. And there were tons of writers, starting with Stan Lee, but like there was only one artist ever. So that was freaking awesome to see him on screen. Nice little one. What? That little brief yeah. cameo, yeah, it was quite nice to see the two things merge, wasn't it? Because that never even mm-hmm. happens, you know. We did co- Dan Lee later on, you know, pop up with a couple of Hulks uh, cameos. Yeah. But uh, at that time, we'd never seen anyone from the comic side of things ever make an appearance. So I think that's the first and only time that Jack Kirby ever featured in the series, you know. Nice little nod, yeah. And, oh, and the guy who played... Uh, the, you know, Harry Simon, the, the chief or whatever, he was in Star Trek. He played one of the admirals. Yeah, I'm just looking at his name here, if it rings a bell to you. His name was, um, I'm going to probably screw up his surname, do forgive me. But his first name is Falmus, and his surname was Rasul, Rasulala? Rasulala? Yeah. Rasulala, yeah. And he played Deputy Simon in this story, that's right, yeah. There you go. There you are, see. But, yeah. as you say, interesting twist with the tumour thing. It was. Nice little nod with Jack Kirby, so. Yeah, interesting. Last couple of minutes there. Um, well, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, it was an interesting idea. And, of course, it was interesting how they sort of, you know, they they were trying to tread very lightly on the mental illness, um, you know, question. And then Sherman Helmsley's character no mustache, so you don't automatically think he's George Jefferson. Uh, well, he is George Jefferson, but anyway, so not, not in this story. Yeah. But saying, oh, you know, they have, they're artists. They have big imaginations. It's like, well, so, so do a lot of people, but they don't take a shotgun and pretend they're hunting in the wild. Uh, so um, I, I was also wondering a little bit, too, how, I mean, they, they are definitely mentioning Ernest Hemingway, and I kind of went, did they get sued for that? Because I would think that if I was related to er- Ernest Hemingway, I really wouldn't like sort of a, a you know, more than a hint of a comparison they, that uh, him and all his relatives are a little bit crazy. They they probably go uh, some type of clearance from the estate before they come up with the story. Book. Yeah, I mean, it's a good story, and I like the acting. So give it a letter. Uh, I say maybe a C plus. Okay, I'll give it a B for for... Kirby. Yep, and I'll give it a B plus myself. And I'm going to give it a C plus. Mm. So, yeah, we've got a bit of a nice little balance there uh, of uh, C's and B's, as they say. Uh, and thank you guys for all, all for listening to this uh, episode. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and, and thank you also, as always, to Graham, Sue, and Alex. Thank no you, problem. guys. Yeah, you're welcome. And in the immortal words of Sue, Don't hulk out!